Since I'm the Malcolm X of tech, I figured it's only right that I break down Security X. Tell you what it is, who it's for, and if it's a good idea for you to get the certification. Let's go ahead and get into it. The Security X certification actually worth your time, money, and energy. Or is it just another overpriced PDF that you forget probably in the next 30 days? So I'm not really here to sell you a dream. I just want to break it down bit by bit and make you or have you make your own decision on your own. Right. So we'll talk about the facts, the failures and just one thing that really separates the people that fail and uh, the people that uh, pass. So just stick around to the end and I'll tell you, you know, how a lot of people are uh, using this certification to you know better their lives get better positions and uh, to make more money so security x isn't you know just like a, a buzzword so this is after a lot of the more entry-level certifications so if you don't have a plus if you don't have network plus especially if you don't have security plus this probably isn't the best place uh, for you to start your certification uh, journey right so it's going to cover a bunch of different topics uh, but basically it's going to be threat detection uh, risk management, uh, network security, identity and access control, and just basic incident response, right? Even though this isn't a entry-level certification, it's still going to cover a lot of the things that are on uh, the Security Plus, but just go a lot more uh, in depth. So if you're looking to go after this, think of it as like you will just be the first line of defense for, for any company. You know, you're the person making sure that the, the creepy people, the weirdos, don't get past uh, the front door. So according to Cybersecurity Ventures, uh, over three and a half million cybersecurity jobs still are unfilled globally. Companies are, especially now with how fast technology is moving, AI and all this other stuff, they're really starting to get desperate for people that are actually talented, right? So it's cool to have the piece of paper, but... Uh, people that have the piece of paper and actually have the skills and the talent uh, to back it up. And it's just basically people that, you know, understand the tech, but also understand uh, the threat levels and have an awareness of how to be proactive, how to react to certain threats and stuff like that. Security X can be, you know, your ticket to enter uh, this space without really needing 10 years of experience. You still got to have the skill sets, but the certification can lack or make up for the perceived lack of experience. So the good thing is you don't have to be, like I said, 10 years deep, a hacker already, the top of the top, the boss of all bosses. You can still get this certification, but I would definitely recommend that you have other certifications and have some experience in cybersecurity. So, you know, maybe... Uh, be a cybersecurity analyst already or a junior uh, cybersecurity analyst uh, before you uh, tackle uh, this certification. So uh, if you are in general IT or help desk, it may be more beneficial to go after maybe A plus or uh, another certification like that. Um, also, uh, this is a really uh, big certification for uh, the DOD and the Department of Defense. So if you are a veteran or active duty military, and you're looking for, you know, either post service skill set or looking for a certification to, to booster your promotion potential. If you plan on staying in the military, you can do that. Um, also, this is a good one for uh, career changers, um, meaning that if you're already in tech, right? If you're already in tech, um, where maybe you're doing networking, maybe you're doing cloud stuff, maybe you're doing server administration, uh, this would be um, a cool little certification uh, to look into to get some cybersecurity skills. Now, from what I've been seeing uh, from students, uh, one of the main reasons that uh, people pass this certification in general is just having a framework, right? So you got to train within a framework and not just watching YouTube videos, not just reading books, but just having like a real system, some type of practice lab, something to actually put your hands on to um, actually be able to see viruses at work, to actually see social engineering at work, to actually be able to see how a hacker thinks, right? Play by play 
and okay, if they do this and I'll do that pretty much like uh, a human chess match. Um, and also having something that, um, has some type of mentorship or is instructor led. Um, I would highly advise that you either go to some type of boot camp or some type of online course. If you're looking to, to get into, uh, this certification, um, it also helps with accountability, uh, as well. Uh, if you go through a college, if you go through a boot camp, if you go through something else that will actually help you to uh, stay on track, because this is not an easy certification. Um, and then just long, long story short, just having a roadmap uh, that pretty much sticks to the content that is inside of uh, the Security X certification. So the, for what I've seen, the number one, the number one reason people fail is that they think watching videos is going to be enough and it's just not. Or, you know, they memorize instead of master, right? Once you get to the certification, it's, it's, it's not just memorizing questions and answers. It's not just being good at taking a test. You have to actually know how to do this stuff, right? So Security X, it tests like how you think, right? Not how well you can kind of cram and remember stuff. You know, if you don't know how to actually break down the scenarios that are presented in front of you and apply the knowledge, you'll get hit with some, some simulation questions and uh, just some questions overall and some concepts that's going to probably have you freeze up. Um, and it's going to be pretty rough, right? And just I'm just going to be honest with you, man. I'm just going to be 100% honest and real with you. Most people that self-study, they never take the test. They never take the test. Most people, oh, I've been studying for, for, for this exam for six months, 10 months, my whole damn life. Most of those people do not take uh, the exam. You do need support. You do need structure. And honestly, you need pressure to actually go take the, take the certification, right? So is... Security X worth it? it? It really depends, man. If you're looking to, you know, pad your resume without learning anything, nah. And that's another thing, right? Let's just say somehow you take the certification, you pass, but you do actually don't know what the hell you're doing. It's going to be all bad, right? Because this certification for sure is going to come with some serious expectations when it comes to are you actually landing your job? That's why this one is more important. Now, the other certifications, I always say you don't need any experience. This certification, I will say you need experience just because the expectation of what you should know how to do is going to be uh, so high. Um, now that we've kind of covered this, I actually want to go over some of the stuff that you are going to be expected to know before you take the exam and before you get a job that's going to cover some of these skills. It's going to cover like a lot of different stuff. And I actually took this certification a long, 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 long time ago uh, and failed it the first time I took it. Right. And when I took it, it was called uh, the CAS, the CompTIA Certified Practitioner. I don't remember what the A stands for, uh, but it was called CAS Plus. That's what it was called. Um, and when I took it, I didn't really study that much, to be honest. I didn't really go over anything because I thought I was uh, uh, the best guy. Uh, in the world, and I thought I was a you know a bad, um, a bad MF, and uh, it didn't work out well. <laughs> it worked out well, like it was in the first five courses I knew I was gonna pass, but just on this actual uh, certification, um, you gonna get a maximum of ninety questions, just like a lot of the other certifications. It's gonna be uh, multiple choice, and you gonna get some performance based uh, simulations. On this exam, you gonna get one hundred and sixty five minutes maximum to take the exam. And just to kind of give you an overview, CompTIA actually suggests that I don't think you need this much experience, but you need some experience. It says you need a minimum of 10 years of general hands-on IT experience that includes at least five years of broad hands-on IT security experience. I would say you need at least at the minimum two to five, two to five years of security focus experience before you really take this exam. If not, you're going to get an L. You're going to take an L. So it's four main things that you I really need to focus on the biggest part of the exam is going to be going over security engineering and then it's going to be some security architecture on there. Then it's going to be security operations. And last but not least, it's going to be governance, risk and compliance. So uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, dive deeper in just because it's one of the biggest parts of the exam is the uh, security engineering. So. With this, it's going to be a lot of scenario-based stuff, and you have to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. 
how to troubleshoot stuff, so on and so forth. So uh, stuff like troubleshooting common issues with identity and access management, which is super important when you are dealing with uh, cybersecurity, especially if you're in like an enterprise or a business environment. And also just analyzing different things, uh, what, what will we need in certain instances, uh, what will be the requirements to enhance security for endpoints or uh, servers. Another thing would be just scenarios that's going to be dealing with the network. So pretty much the infrastructure and security issues that are going to come along uh, with that. Also, just how to implement uh, different security and software updates and changes just to enhance the level of uh, security. Another thing that's going to come up a lot is how to automate a lot of these different things, how to automate in a personal as well as an enterprise uh, environment. And also what are the dangers of like old or legacy systems? So how to uh, prevent stuff from, from leaking, how to prevent stuff from uh, messing up. So those are just a few different things that uh, you need to know. Now, like I said, is, is uh, security X, is it for you? Is it, um, worth it that's completely you know up to you actually i want you to put that in the comments what do you think after this quick little overview video do you think you'll be taking security x or are you going to be going elsewhere starting elsewhere just let me know um in the comments and uh, before i let you guys go i want to let you guys know that quick little update that all active military soldiers train with master it for free all military trained with master it for free so if you're a soldier, you train with Master IT uh, for free. A plus, Net plus, and Security plus. Soon we'll add a Security X, uh, but right now we're just focusing on uh, that three core right now. But all active, active military, all active military soldiers train with Master IT. Get the training certification for free. That's it. That's all. Other than that, I'll see you in class.